Aaron Boone's on the line. Aaron, Craig, and Evan, of course. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Doing great. You know, the big comedy show tonight. Evan's going to be on stage for a minute. I'm going to send you a video right afterwards so you can uh, give me an immediate response to it, okay? Absolutely. Uh, the most important, I think, pressing question for the Yankees right now is, why do you, why do you, oh, it's just so, it's just a tough question to ask. Uh, you make some of these decisions that boggle my mind. <laughs> Why not Kluby? Why Klub? <laughs> you you always had a Y or an IE to every nickname you got. But with Corey Kluber, you gave him the nickname Klub. Why not Kluby? Oh, I was going to say, I don't think I call him Kluby. I think I call him Klub. That's what I'm trying to figure out as to why. Why not Kluby? Uh, it makes more sense. <laughs> um, I don't know. He's Klub. All right, that's all I got he for just, you. That's all I got. That's it. Good luck tomorrow. No, where, all right. That's where, all. where is uh, Judge E? Can I call him Judge E? No. No, I can't do it. I apologize, Aaron. AJ. 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 You're right. <laughs> where is Aaron Judge's health in terms of you feeling comfortable playing him in the field tomorrow night in Boston? Yeah, I'm hopeful he's, uh, I'll have him in the field tomorrow, but, um, you know, make that call. Obviously, first first day off here in a long time, which which is nice and I, I think much needed. But um, I would expect him to be in the field tomorrow. Um, you know, that said, I'll, we'll make that call when we get to the park and and see what we're dealing with. Was it some kind of lingering issue? Did he uh, aggravate something a couple of days ago that we were just unaware of that I had you been, DH him twice in a row? No, it's just been lingering here this last week a little bit on him. So. Um, you know, obviously we've been in a tough stretch, so uh, just decided it was, it was best, especially with this off day, to have him have him in the DH role uh, the last two days. Kleber Torres, I mean, the stats are obvious. Since you moved him to second base, I think he's hitting three fifty. He bounced back mm-hmm. last night, didn't have the greatest at bat with guys on base, then ends up getting the game-winning hit. Do you notice a difference in him? Maybe he's more relaxed since the move to second base? Um. <clears throat> I definitely feel like he's in a better place this last week. Um, I think he started to get really comfortable at second base where, you know, obviously he's played there a lot over the last, you know, few years. Um, but I felt like even after a couple of mishaps in the field initially when he went to second base, I feel like he's played it really well here this this last week. Um, I, 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 also coinciding with him swinging the bat well. But I felt, you know, I think the biggest thing with swing the bat is he he's kind of done that all year. He just hasn't hit for the power and you know, he's had little, little valleys, but for the most part, he's been fairly consistent at the plate. It just hasn't been the power there. So I, I haven't worried about him really hitting. I feel like that's going to come. And, and I feel like he's so important, you know, kind of hitting sort of in the middle of our lineup because he is such a good hitter and hopefully he can continue to, to swing the bat like he is because I feel like there's just going to be a lot of opportunities to drive in big runs for him. And obviously a byproduct of this is Gio playing a lot of shortstop, DJ playing mm-hmm. third base. How do you feel defensively about the left side of your infield with those changes? Um, well, now now that DJ's, you know, arms, like, you know, I, obviously I, for that long stretch, I didn't play him at third base at all, and I was playing Odor over there be, for when uh, DJ hurt his arm you know, uh, about a month and a half ago. But uh, over the last couple of weeks, feel like that's not an issue now. So I feel comfortable with him over at third. He's actually, you know, over the couple of years he's played with us, he's grayed out really well at third, you know, very similar to, you know, his play at second base. So I feel good about that. With Gio, um, look, wherever he goes, I feel good. He's He's made a couple of mistakes over there, but I also feel like that's, you know that that can that can happen to him every now and then at third base. So, you know, we we might not get the greatest range out there, but I do feel confident that he's going to be steady uh, in handling the routine plays. I saw something that I was you know fascinated with last night, and that was you know you take the lead, you know, after the bang bang plate, the plate, okay, a little breathing room, and then Gary Sanchez hits that bomb to dead center. And it was great mm-hmm. for him, obviously, that he hit it because, you know, he's a guy that needs to have some big plays just, I think, confidence-wise. But I noticed the dugout, and mm-hmm. that spoke volumes to me uh, on a number of levels. One, and tell, please tell me if I'm wrong on this, the guys are aware of the beatdown that this kid has taken. You you know, in the press, the fans, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And they must love the kid. Um, 
I, I would say yes. I mean, first first and foremost, it's a huge game for us, and we're playing right. for a lot. But you, you'd already taken the lead, time. so it just gave you a, yeah. you know a bigger cushion for a round that's coming in the ninth. But you know, the, yeah. it's the, same, the thing. Just so to so show that I'm fair, what I criticized you guys about back in April and May, your team with no soul, with no identity, yeah. is the exact opposite of what I saw last night. Look. <clears throat> I, you know, I, I feel like I've said this a lot to people. I don't know if they believe me or not or, or whatever, but Gary, I have so much respect for him as a person and how, especially this year, how I just feel like he's, he's just matured so much and how he deals with outside noise and, and the constant criticism, you know, early in the year, you know, he lost a lot of playing time, and while he certainly wasn't happy about it, he, he, he you know, what he did about it was worked. He, he came in, he made a, the net, some necessary adjustments that he had to make at the plate. He continued to work his tail off and has, you know, from last winter on through spring training and on through the year defensively. I feel like he's, he's become a smart worker as far as knowing how to, how to work. You know, it's, it's one thing to just, you know, bang your head against the wall and work, 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 work. But the reality is it's a demanding position of 162 games. I feel like he knows how to navigate his day now. And he's, he's just a really great team guy. Like he cares about his teammates. He, it's about winning for him. And, and I think that absolutely rubs off comes, comes through to the other guys. And I think uh, across the board in that room, they have a lot of respect I for the person. I, honestly, I thought the gun, that throw he made to second to Nail Garcia yeah. was even better. I mean, that was such a huge part of the game. And that, that was always such a positive attribute of Gary's career. Like, early in his career, he would throw out 35% of base runners. That was like mm-hmm. old-school Gary Sanchez, seeing him unleash a throw like that in such a big spot. Yeah, it was huge. And and, and look, and I think, you know, over the last couple of weeks where, you know, he's had a few plays, you know, that have been costly defensively, I think it was important for him to get in there and have a huge defensive play like that. You, and if you're, you know, you know, I, I think the next couple of hitters, there was a couple of tough blocks with two strikes that were important back there. So really good to see him not only be prepared and ready for the situation, but to come in and impact the game on both sides of the ball was awesome. Do you think he's unfairly treated by the media and fans, Gary? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. And And look, I mean – Look, he's 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 made mistakes and and you know plays that you know at different times have cost us or whatever. So it's certainly fair to you know point out or talk about you know the good and bad that happens over the course of the season, offensively, defensively. I mean that's part of covering a team. And and when you're you know on the Yankees and there's a lot of interest, like that's understandable. You know I think when people talk about lazy or all like that could not be further from who the man is why do you because like in new york it seems like when you come here as a free agent or you're traded here you're going to be treated harder but the homegrown guy kind of gets a little bit more love gary's a homegrown guy gary was unbelievable five years ago in 2016 why do you think he's treated unfairly in your mind then well because i think he's had growing pains as 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 a player you know and and i think when you come up through the system and you have massive success right out of the gate um you know you're 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 kind of anointed as this next guy and it, people think it's you know just going to happen and come easy and i think when you're talking about the position of catcher that is on such a different level than really any other position player with just the things that you have to learn and grow into and, you know, relationship wise with pitchers and things like that. Like it, it's, I think why you see a lot of catchers sometimes get to the big leagues a little bit later because there's so many nuanced things that come with learning the position. Now you come up as this big prospect early in your career, you hit all these home runs, you have this massive success and, but there's a lot to learn about the art of catching that, you know, you're learning on the biggest stage with the highest of expectations because of your talent and what you've, what you've done earlier in your, your career. So I think it's just part of the evolution of, 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 you know, having a very demanding position.
Talking Aaron Boone, as we always do. Day off today. They're on their way to Boston tonight. And, of course, uh, then it's it's real. It's, uh, it's essentially playoff baseball. You get three against the Red Sox. You get Toronto after that. And then you end up back in the stadium <clears throat> against Tampa. You've used something like 130 different starting lineups, more than any other team in baseball this year. And I wonder, as you sit down with the rest of the coaching staff in the front office for this particular series against Boston, and I'll add Toronto to that as well, do you foresee any type of, hey, this is my lineup for these six games, or should we expect a different lineup every night? Um, I, I think it'll be fairly consistent with, with, you know, I think a lot of that lineup, different lineup, you know, a lot of times it's it's because one player's out of it or there's one spot. Like, I feel like the essence of our lineup, especially since guys have been healthy in the trade line, has kind of been there, you know, like, the seven hole may be different one day. So that makes it a different lineup, you know, um, you know, depending on look who we're facing right, left, you know, we'll mix and match probably a little bit here and there, but I expect it to be uh, somewhat consistent, you know, depending on, do you have Luke Voigt DHing one day and, and the jumbo package, for example, in the outfield with, with judgy in center field one day, do we do that? Um, you know, or, you know, but I would expect Gardy to be in there a lot and, um, we'll just kind of, depending on, on who we're facing does that he, day and th- who's pitching for us, we'll, we'll line it up how we think. It's funny. Yeah. I've referred to Brett Gardner as the coach's son. You know, the kid that plays every game on, uh, because his dad's the coach, but he yeah. actually came through over the last month. He, you know, hit a, found a hot spot and up before mm-hmm. his 0 for 10 streak, the guy was your most consistent hitter. Um, yeah. you've been around this for a long time. And when Brian brought, made the decision to bring Gardner back again this year, no one ever thought he's going to be playing significant time, especially in key games like this. Are you amazed by him? Like when you think of Brett Gardner, and you're going to put him in the lineup every night against the Red Sox and or Toronto. Uh, like I just wonder your thoughts on him overall, considering his age, the amount of uh, mileage on his body, and what he's yeah. been able to do here over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, well, durability's always, you know been one of his calling cards and you know he's he's obviously in great condition you know he's 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 strong as an ox um you know takes care of himself he's tough you know so you know going back to when we brought him back i wasn't worried about him you know from a durability standpoint being available you know it's just like depending on you know what our outfield situation was he going to be a true fourth outfielder you know, inevitably people go down, you, you earn more opportunities and whatever. Um, but I think, you know, I, I, I would quibble with you a little and say just the last few weeks or the last month and say it's pretty much been the second half. I mean, I, you know, he's he's his at-bats have really ticked up here in the second half. I, I think he's probably, you know, in the high 300s from an on-base standpoint in the second half of the season, and it's just been really good at-bats no matter where. We've had him in the order, and then you can't discount what he brings defensively. Like like when he's in center field, now you got Judge and Gallo out there, turns into a really good outfield, and and uh, that's that's something that's that's obviously very important. I think I can ask this without Craig getting offended, without him thinking I'm going to jinx anything. Garrett Cole is going to start on Friday. I knew this was coming. His next start would be scheduled for Wednesday, and then I assume. Yeah three days rest if you need it, right? You uh, Is that a fair assumption that if needed, Garrett Cole, three days rest, game 162, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean I, I'd be lying if I hadn't thought about that a little bit. We'll kind of cross that bridge when we get there. It could be on three days rest, or it, it could be, uh, look, we got to. We, if we're in a position where we have to win that game, we got to win the wild card game too. So you got to win two games anyway. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I know Garrett's on board with what whatever we we want to do whichever way we want to go right hopefully hopefully we're in a position where that last game uh going into the wild card game doesn't mean anything are are you because look there's rain in the forecast tomorrow which screws everything up all right it really does especially in the case of garrett cole would you be comfortable pitching him on three days rest even if it's not a game 162 just because hey i gotta maximize garrett cole there happened to be a rain out I think the only time he's ever pitched on three days rest was last year during the playoffs, and he was he was great. He pitched into the sixth inning, only allowed one run. Would you be comfortable doing that prior to one sixty two? Well, we'll see. I mean, you're talking about I don't know that you mean pitching possibly back to back times. 
to the end of the year? Yes. So, you mean if, if well, like, rain look, tomorrow? Look, it's it's going to rain tomorrow. I, I hope they play because I want right. to see. I want to see good baseball. I don't want to see a seven-inning yeah. doubleheader. I don't want to see that garbage. And I'd love to see Garrett Cole pitch as much as possible. It's great baseball. Yeah. I know yeah. you've thought about it. I mean, obviously yeah. it may not get rained out, but would you be comfortable with him pulling a CC? Back-to-back three days rest, so you maximize your best pitcher. Yeah, I don't know about that back-to-back three days rest. We'll just have to – but, again, this it, it all comes down to, you know, what was the game prior? You know, uh, in a lot of ways, what's the day after like? How does he feel from a recovery standpoint? And we'll we'll try and make the best possible call for – for first and foremost for us, but also making sure that he's in a good spot to – to go out there and, and be you know close to his best. Do you personally have a preference, by the way, if there was a rain out to using an off day as opposed to a seven inning doubleheader? Do you have a preference on what you or the team would rather see happen in that situation? Um, yeah, um, it's a good question. You mean if we got rained out? Would, yeah, I, I haven't even looked if there's you know do we both Monday. have off days on that Monday? Monday, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'd probably prefer the Monday off day. Interesting. Know, with, okay. With these games being at this point, um, but uh, you know, you know, we've we've been doing this doubleheader thing and the seven inning doubleheader thing now for for a couple of seasons, and you know, feel like we're pretty, uh, you know, adept at it, and and you know, whatever, you know, whatever baseball decides, we'll. We'll have to make the best of. Last thing for me, Aaron. I don't want to read too much into it, but the way you won last night's game with mm-hmm. the rally after the fifth and a couple big hits, you know, Gary and Glaber and all that stuff, was reminiscent of a lot of the games you won during the 13-game win streak. Was there mm-hmm. any aspect of last night's game that made you kind of feel, I think we may have just clicked? Um, I was really pleased to see how well we played in the second half of that game, especially after it started. I just felt like it's a little sluggish. You know, I, I felt like Klubes. <laughs> I felt like he, he actually threw the ball pretty well and was kind of, you know, a little bit unlucky to give up a few runs there where they, you know, kind of dumping some balls around on him. And it was just kind of that sucking the air out of it because we hadn't gotten anything going yet offensively. And they, a bloop here that added, added to the lead. Um, and then I just thought some really good at bats occurred and Higgy, Higgy stung another one after, you know, his first day be, that's probably a three run homer the night before, but the way the wind was blowing, it knocked that ball. It even knocked down Gary's ball a little bit. Gary killed that ball to center field and it barely got out. But, um, so Higgy getting a big double there to kind of inject it a little bit of life. Okay. We're back in this now. And then I thought we just did some really good things. From a bullpen standpoint, um, from a defensive standpoint, and, and from just some winning at bats there in, in in some key spots. With the playoffs essentially beginning tomorrow, with this nine mm-hmm. game stretch yeah. against Boston, Toronto, and Tampa, do you do mm-hmm. anything different pregame? Like, is there an Aaron Boone? I'm going to rile the troops up. I'm going to pump them yeah, up. He's going to do. He's going to make them watch your stand up tonight. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Do you do anything differently uh, tomorrow? No. No, no, it's it's tomorrow's kind of business as usual. Look, we've had talks and conversations throughout this over the last couple of months, whether it's in a hitters meeting or, you know, as a group or whatever it is, you know, there's different times. So, you know, I always just kind of, you know, try to not have anything scripted. You know, it's it's like we're going to go in tomorrow and prepare. And if, if things need to be said, uh so be it. But I don't plan on, you know, getting up and addressing the team because even though I think it's a good analogy that these are essentially like playoff games now, in a lot of ways, I feel like we've been in that mode for the last couple of months, knowing that we had to kind of dig ourselves out of, and we've had that kind of energy and focus. So we got to, the, the real fun begins well, listen, now. Got you got nine games against good teams. You got what every player and coach that we've ever talked to has ever asked for. Control your own destiny in the final two weeks and let it let it all play out the way it will. But you got that, and that's all you can ask for. So go make the most of it, and let's see some playoffs in a couple of weeks. And we wish you the best of luck. Talk to you next week. I'll send you the video as soon as he's done tonight. 
Uh, as I get ready, I, I'll be watching a little bit of stand-up comedy. On uh, as I'm going to bed tonight, I will add Evans to the list. Wow, a uh, lot of pressure. Now. Immediate reaction, please, pressure. so I can use it tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> yeah, a lot of pressure. All right, be good, buddy. Uh, safe travels as well. All right, thanks. Sweet tango apples, apples so good they make you smile. They're crisp, they're juicy, and the flavor's just right. Sweet Tango Apples, so good they make you smile. Buy Sweet Tango Apples at a store near you today.